Hello again. This is now week 11 of lectures. And this week we'll extend the Poisson model that we saw in the last two weeks. So the, in week 9 we saw the Poisson model for count data. In week 10 we looked at the quasi-Poisson and negative binomial models to extend the Poisson when the dispersion wasn't equal to 1, so either under-dispersed or over-dispersed data. So we looked at the notes in week 10 and we said that the quasi-Poisson you can apply to both the over-dispersed and under-dispersed Poisson, but the negative binomial is more suited for the over-dispersed. You can try it for the under-dispersed as well. So this week we look at zero inflated models for count data. This is another problem with Poisson data where we have more than expected number of zeros under a Poisson model. So we'll take a look at the zero inflated Poisson model as well as the zero inflated negative binomial model. In the library is a book uh, by Zor, and I, I've actually put a PDF of the book on LMS and uh, I think it's under week 11 lectures. You should look at the book. It's actually titled the Mixed Effects Models and Extensions in Ecology with R. The Mixed Effects part is something we cover in STAT 3401 next year in first semester, or 4065, STAT 4065. So that will be useful when you, and if you do that course. But there's also another article online that looks at the mathematical aspects of the negative binomial Zero inflated, zero inflated negative binomial and zero inflated fossil models. And there's also the book by Agresti on categorical data analysis. The idea here is that the zero inflated Poisson model is used to model data where the excess counts for zero is unexpected or too high for a Poisson model to handle. So in many situations, the loss of zero counts for many reasons. The mathematical structure here essentially models the zero count separately as well as under the Poisson model. So the simplest model here is to use a Bernoulli or binomial model for the zeros, for the excess zeros, and then also whatever is the expected number of zeros under the Poisson is modeled as usual. So there are two parts to the model. The usual Poisson part and then an extra part that is going to be the logistic regression part for the zeros, modeling the zeros on the binomial model. Example here is the state wildlife biologists want to model how many fish are being caught by fishermen at a state park. So visitors are asked how long they stayed, how many people were in the group, and how many children were in the group, and how many fish were caught. Here's the data. Live bait was used or not, camper was taken or not, how many persons were in the group, how many children, and how many fish they caught. So looking at the fish here, you can see up to the third quarter, I think it's only two, but the maximum is 1.9. So you expect this data to be very, very right school, skewed. Now, of course, many visitors don't catch, catch any fish at all. So there will be lots of zeros in this data. Here are the variables that we will have in the data set, and they were all together 250 groups of people for whom home data is available. And here is a plot of the data, just a histogram is fine. As we said earlier, lots of zeros. There were only 250 groups all together, so almost 220 or so didn't catch any fish, and as we saw, there's some large numbers over here, 149 or so, and a few other struggles along the way. But by and large, mainly, it seems to be fairly well behaved in the first part, except for the excess zeros. In addition to investigating the number of fish caught, you also want to take a look at the behavior of the excess zeros and predicting who doesn't catch fish. So all the recurrent model for the Poisson or negative binomial models, and zero inflated Poisson regression for uh, the data. So all these models can be fitted. We can just fit an ordinary Poisson or negative binomial. And then we can fit a zero inflated model, Poisson, and zero inflated negative binomial. Of course, we can also put in here 
the quasi Poisson as well. If we wish. Worth finding this in anyway, if you wish. So let's have a look at how this works. Here's the model. We've got the usual model for the Poisson part here. And then this is the Poisson family. This is the Poisson model for the data. We haven't actually included any introductions, although you might want to try them. I think you'll find that the model without interactions is just as good as the one with interactions, so we pick a simpler model here. And so you can immediately see that the degrees of freedom here for residuals is 245, but the residual deviance is 1200 odd. So the ratio is almost about 500 and so, very large, which means immediately you notice that the model here is over dispersed. Looking at the residual plots over here, we find that for the residuals against fitted values, there certainly is some change in variance of spread over here. We can see them some fanning out as we look at this. And it's also clear over here the dispersion changes with the different values. And the residuals actually are quite large as well, up to 30 or so. So the way the zero inflated model works is that we have the excess zeros modeled as a Bernoulli random variable. And there are also zeros that would naturally arise from a Poisson process. So the zeros actually have two parts to the model. The first part is the excess zeros are actually just probability with probability p over here. And the Poisson zeros are the usual Poisson distribution here. Now, there is a 1 minus p here. This is essentially also more properly called a mixture model. For those of you who might do more stats, you might probably see this kind of idea somewhere. In the sense that the model is made of two parts, a binomial or Bernoulli part and a Poisson part. The probabilities have to add to one. So there's a weight of P over here and the remaining weight of 1 minus P is over here. And the rest of it's Poisson which will add to one anyway. That's a probability of zero. Probability of non-zero Poisson conscious by the usual Poisson distribution as we have over here. But of course, the rate here of 1 minus p remains here. It's not too much work to show that the mean of y here is 1 minus p times mu, where mu is the mean of the Poisson process. And the variance is mu times 1 minus p times 1 plus p mu. Yes, I'm waiting here. So those of you who might have done more probability, especially second year probability theory, won't have too much problems sorting this out. But if you're interested, come and ask me sometime, and I'll show you how this works. The model here now has two parts as well. The first part is the Poisson part as before, up till here. There's then some conditioning here, and the rest of it is the camper plus child plus camper plus persons here. <clears throat> so now you can see the model here. In the binomial part of the model, the live bait is not significant. So we can omit that. And so we'll refit the model. Here it is. I'm sorry, it's on the screen over here on the commands, but you've got all the commands from the previous slide. So here now we have, in the Poisson part of the model, all the variables are significant. In the binomial part of the model, we've got three of the variables significant, and live rate was omitted. Here are the residual plots for the model. You can see the residuals are up to 25 or so. If I go back for a second to the previous residuals, we are above 30, so the residual plots have straight away improved. But there's still some sign of dispersion change over here, as you can see some change in dispersion as you look at this flaring out. The model here is much improved, as we said here. Now, if you look at the model as it stands here, you see the probability of getting, getting zero fish. These three variables affect that. So if there are more persons, then the number of fish caught, the number of zero fish caught has a high probability. If the camper is taken, the probability of catching no fish is also increased. And if there are children, more children, the probability of no fish is also increased. If you look at the Poisson part of the model, let's start with live bait. If you have live bait, you get more fish. If you have more persons, remember here, if you increase the number of people, probability of getting zero fish has 
decreased so probably you're getting more fish have increased you take a camera probably you're getting zero fish has decreased probably you're getting more fish has increased if you have more children then you're more likely not to catch any fish in other words here also if you want more children then the number of fish you catch will, will be decreased so those things are consistent those things that increase the odds of probability of getting zero fish act in the opposite way for getting more fish or the average fish increases in the Poisson model so those things are consistent and I've written them down in the next slide over here now how about the zero inflated negative Bernoulli model here so in this case the excess zero is remodeled as the Bernoulli random variable as before but now the non-zero counts come from a negative Bernoulli distribution the probability model here is similar. We still have this mixture model idea. So probability of y equals zero is some fixed p here. Probability of y equals zero is the first part comes from the mixture part of one minus p, and the rest comes from the negative binomial model. I could also write down here probability for y bigger than zero, but that's a bit more complicated, so I'll lose that. I'll leave it behind. But the mean here is one minus p times mu, and the variance here is mu one minus p and 1 plus mu times p plus alpha, where this alpha is a parameter of the negative variable distribution. If I put f, x, alpha equals 0, then you can see it reduces just to the zero inflated Poisson model. So again, these things aren't too hard to show. If you're interested, come and see me sometime. Here is data from Agresti's book. Data were taken from a survey of 13 or 8 people who were asked how many homicide victims do you know and the question here was whether the race of the person decides it depends whether the respondents color here affects the number of homicide victims they knew so here's the data it came in a table form in the book and we've just put this together in a data frame so we've got the number of blacks number of whites in the data set and we've got our ESP the respondents were as the number of victims that they knew or from side and then we put together the race as a factor and finally the victim is the data frame and you can look at the data if you wish here the table of the data as far as white black is concerned, you see there are more white respondents than black respondents. The mean here, the mean number of homicide victims that blacks know is 0.5 compared to about 0.09 for the whites, much, much higher for the people of black color. And as far as the variance is concerned, you can see straight away see here the variance is different for the two races which means you certainly expect here to be some over dispersion and here is a simple uh, table of race versus the respondents so you can see that for the respondents the number of homicide victims they knew is as you can see from here is for the white is one at six but otherwise it's higher for the people of uh, color essentially and there certainly is evidence of zero inflation here, lots more zeros here than you expect to see in the Poisson model. Here is the model, simple Poisson model for the data. So we fit all the models that you can think of here. And you can see that you get significance here. But certainly, again, you'll see there is going to be, in this case, degrees of freedom is much higher than the suitable deviance. So here you'll get under dispersion. And the dispersion test here tells you that actually the true dispersion is greater than one, which is surprising because as we saw here, the degrees of freedom actually are higher than the suitable deviance. But still in this case, it works out the deviance here, according to the deviance test, is greater than one. The suitable plots here, about 20 or so, you can see some clear evidence of the over dispersion here, and of course zero counts as well. Now this is a new one, an autogram. You won't find this in the R packages that you can install, but you can install this by running this command over here. Just copy and paste it and run it, and you'll be able to install this particular package. 
And the rotogram essentially is a graphical idea of where you're overestimating or underestimating the count. So where the bar falls below the zero line here, that indicates that you are underestimating the counts in that particular category. And when it's above the line, that is evidence of overestimating. So the Poisson model here underestimates all the counts except the one at one here. It overestimates that one. And I'm just explaining that here in the words. Now, the counts actually have been square root transformed to avoid the smaller counts being swung by larger counts. So as far as data transformation is concerned, here's another little hint. If you've got count data, you shouldn't log it. You should use square root. And the reason is actually count data may often contain zero as well, and the log of zero is undefined. So here you take a look at the square root transformation. Well, and of course, you've got continuous data. You take a look at the same kind of data if it's right skewed. You take a look at something like log. You could also consider square root, but log is the more usual one there. Here's the next model, a negative binomial model for the same data. And if I take a look at the residual plots, we find it's improved. They are from 25 now to 15 or so, but there's still evidence of issues with the dispersion. And the rotogram here shows that while you're actually okay with the zero counts now, but the one has been overestimated and the other one's two, three, and so on are mainly underestimated. So let's take a look at the zero inflated negative binomial model in this case. This is a similar structure to what we saw for the zero inflated Poisson model. The first part here is the usual negative binomial part, and this here is the Bernoulli part over here. The simulation of negative binomial here. EM equals true. The reason is that this, these models actually are mixture models, and uh, so the parameters here are estimated by what's called the EM algorithm. Some of you might have heard of this. If you do fourth year statistics with us, fourth year computational statistics, you will learn this algorithm as well, and also in some other courses as well. So you can see here that in the Bernoulli part of the model, the race is significant. It's negative, which means that as far as the zero counts are concerned, the probability of essentially knowing uh, no homicide victims is going to be small. This is what we saw earlier. So the black people, the probability or the odds of not knowing any homicide victims is quite small. On the other side here, the race black is large positive, which means the probability of knowing more than zero homicide victims is large. The mean number of homicide victims we know is large. And those things are consistent. This theta is the negative binomial parameter that needs to be estimated here. And we don't have to worry about that so far. The signal plus has again improved, it's under 15 or so now, but this, uh, you can see here, we can judge from the next part of rotogram how the fits are going. And you find most of the fits are fine, you've got the 1 and the 0, and the 1 is okay, 2 is slightly maybe overestimated, 3 is a little down, 4 is a little high, but it certainly has improved. It's better, and there is less misfit. And as we saw, the moral interpretation is, as we, we said, the residuals are improved. The black respondents have much lower zero counts and have much higher mean counts. The white respondents knew fewer homicide victims on average compared to black respondents. That's all for this week. Thank you. Bye.